i nga rangatira mā te nā koutou. Uh, ko uti ihi maere tēnei, um, ka roto i tēnei poihau. Uh, so here I am, a witi, in my uh, bubble, and uh, you'll have to excuse the way that I'm, <laughs> I'm dressed, but I'm uh, just about ready to go out and sort of like wander around the neighbourhood and get some energy back in um, to my, um, my creative system. You know, you'd think that for a writer, being in lockdown um, would be the ideal situation. But actually for me it isn't, because I've always written and lived at the same time. And uh, I find it really difficult to, you know, to be, be here. So I miss, uh, of course, like we all do life. We all miss our families. We all miss our context. Um, we all miss those things that make us who we are. And we're certainly not um, who we are by ourselves, you know, other people also create um, the identity and the, and the mana that we have. Uh, I, uh, uh, I actually do work on uh, several projects um, at once, or maybe it's more tru truthful to say that they work on me. Uh, they um, come from different times in, in my life. So it's not as if they wait, they line up and wait for their turn either. Um, that sounds as if, uh, you know, I'm actually the one who's the instigator of the work when, of course, um, in most cases, I'm not. Um, the work is, is, is um, uh, instigated by all of these people that I've got in my brain and they all are clamouring, uh, you know, to get out. So um, I've often said that um, all of my tipuna are, are there and they are saying things like, oh, hurry up and finish that next book because then once you've finished it, then you can give attention um, to us. And that has actually been the case in the book that will be coming out in November. Um, it's been in my mind for many, many years, actually since I was a, a young boy, of 11 in 1955 and uh, at that stage um, my mother um, allowed my sisters and I to have a certain amount of oil in, uh, in our um, lamps when we went to, to bed because we had no electricity in those days and I would write stories um, on the walls of my, my, uh, my bedroom before the light all um, um, went away and so this particular book has been in my mind ever since those days. One of the things that I think is interesting about um, my own creativity is that um, it looks as if I've done a lot over the last few years, uh, but the books come from um, different parts of the creative impulse, like the two volumes of memoir, well then uh, non-fiction or creative non-fiction, um, Sleep Standing, which is the last novel um, that I um, published around about four years ago now, um, that was um, within the, um, the genre of the novel. Uh, and Black Marks and Pudako, which are two other projects that um, I, I completed, well, they are part of my career as an anthologist. I've uh, been really privileged to be the anthologist of say I think it's around about 19 or 20 um, edited works now on Māori literature, Māori art, um, Māori geography, uh, Māori history and I've always felt that that's a really significant part of my output but again all of these things come from different um, parts of that creative impulse that I mentioned earlier. Um, they require a different sort of energy and so it's not a problem for, for, for me um, to work in these various genres. And as well as that, um, I um, have had two operas um, or two musicals that have actually been um, uh, premiered, um, one called Flowing Water with uh, Janet uh, Jennings and the other one um, called Man Sitting in a, a Garden. Um, both myself and Ken did that one. As well, I've been involved in uh, in film and other projects, but again, they are projects that are from a different kind of energy, and so therefore I find it easy easier to cope uh, with all of those various um, projects. 
I've, I've felt, and I've, in fact, I wrote to Anne um, Salmond um, by email just uh, recently, and I said to her, you know, Anne, after the next project, which is the one that's coming out in November, I said to her, I think that, uh, you know, we should take the opportunity of having been in this bubble to do something that's completely off the wall, to do something that maybe is um, out of the box, uh, something that I'm not really associated with. So what I'm really excited about is thinking um, that you a project into existence. And I um, have or had a friend, um, he was um, an Inuit um, architect called uh, Douglas Cardinal. And Douglas once said to me that once you start thinking about a project, it actually starts to uh, exist in the future. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm looking forward to the fact that it's already written and now all I have to do is write my way towards it. Who wants to write their life again? And I mean, I've done it twice now with the first uh, volume and with the second volume. You kind of think that um, at the end of each one, that the pain will go away, that the, um, um, the who you are is going to go away, and that now you put it to rest two times, uh, that you should be a happier person and a stronger person and a, uh, able to, to move forward in such a way that has, is something um, that strengthens you. And that has certainly been the case. It's certainly been the case. It's certainly been the case with, with Māori Boy. I really wanted to have Māori Boy uh, be about growing up in the 1940s and the 1950s because I didn't think that non-fiction and that history uh, was able to do that um, in, the, in the same way as that, as that um, autobiography or um, creative non-fiction um, can. And why I say that is that I think that history is the public record of what our lives were like during those times. But creative nonfiction and uh, nonfiction, the memoir, the autobiography, is more the personal history of what happened in those times. So more um, of an emotional sense of a people uh, can be um, conveyed uh, through um, creative nonfiction. So with the second one, I think I'll carry that grief around with me all my life. I mean, I thought that I would um, be able to get over it. And with the second one, I wanted to um, uh, make it better than the, than, than the first one, um, in the sense that I wanted to make it better um, in terms of its craft, in terms of its art, in terms of its, its reach, in terms of its expansiveness. Um, it had to be wider, bigger, deeper. So with, with that one, I think I, I went really deep um, into um, my own uh, particular abyss, I guess you could call it. And uh, at the same time, I also wanted um, one of the aims was, of course, not to write uh, an autobiography about myself, uh, but to, um, to um, write an autobiography about everybody else. And um, I kind of hope that they are all, you know, my uh, aunties and uncles um, and those people that I write about, because uh, whereas Māori Boy was about growing up um, from 1944 through to 1960, Native Son was about growing up from 1960 um, through to uh, 1971. They only seem to be very, very, um, a very, 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 very short uh, number of years, but in fact, they were the years, the crucible years, um, the years that made me become a writer. And so the subtitle for, for Native Son is the writer's memoir. The subtitle for um, the earlier uh, book, uh, Māori Boy, is um, uh, a memoir of childhood. So they both have different, they both have different um, ambitions and um, they both have uh, 
um, different points of view and they both have uh, um, different outcomes and hopeful ones, I hope. Well, I'm very sorry to tell you, if you didn't like the first two, that there will be. Um, and it, it's the, um, it will be coming out in around about four years' time. The issue with writing the, the um, memoirs is that there was a lot of, not just personal um, history that I had to um, deal with, but a history of, uh, of the iwi. And so there was a lot of um, research that was required, a lot of really um, strong, um, a really strong need to come to grips with um, the periods um, um, which I was writing about. Uh, so with um, the third one, all of the stuff is there. I mean, I've got all the research done. It's really all they're waiting for me to do, except that I was so exhausted about after doing the, sec the second one, uh, which I finished in August of last year, and it was published in August last year, um, that I said to, to Harriet, oh, Harriet, I, you know, I think I'll take a break of four years before I, I do the fourth one, which is going to be called um, Indigenous Envoy. So there's a progression between Māori boy to native son to Indigenous Envoy, which is also a progression of our people uh, towards um, their particular role within the global economy, within global politics, um, within um, global culture. And just as um, that has been happening to them, it also happened to me because in, in the 1970s and 1980s, um, I went into diplomacy. So I sometimes think to myself, well, is my life conforming to the dictates of fiction um, quite by accident, or am I writing my life, the fiction, to actually conform to my life? Um, I'm not too sure which it is. <laughs> I, I think in many ways I have been writing a life and then living it. Well, you know, there's a Te Rau edition coming out in uh, 2020, uh, this year, and uh, I'm so looking um, forward um, uh, to it. It's um, translated into Māori by a very, very strong rangatira. His name is Timothy Kareatu, and we call him Sam. And to even have Sam think of doing something like this is just totally... Um, so humbling and so amazing because he has always been um, one of the um, um, the leaders in terms of Te Reo and in terms of um, the history of education and in terms of New Zealand history, tribal history um, in Aotearoa. I wrote it in 1987. I was in New York. My daughters were coming on vacation. A whale had come up the Hudson River, a very pungo, very black river for any whale to come up. And I could see it from the window of my uh, 33rd floor apartment. And I really cried because I had been feeling very lonely in New York and thought, well, you know, here's this whale it, it, it's just come up to see me, is the way that I, I thought about it. And I think that the emotional burst that that gave me, the emotional confluence of daughters arriving, of a whale arriving, of being lonely, made me write home, um, write about Aotearoa at the other side of the world, in those days, you couldn't get in touch by internet or anything, so that sense of loneliness of being isolated was even greater than it, it is possibly now. And I think out of all of that confluence came a book which um, I didn't even know was, was, was going to be there. And because it was unexpected and because it was um, spontaneous, 
I think it held within it um, truth and honesty and reality and a sense of simplicity um, that um, others around the world could respond to. And then thanks to uh, Nikki Cairo and to John Barnett, um, who was the producer of the film Well Writer, um, the film burst beyond its constraints of literature and began to be taught in schools um, and universities around the world as a, um, in film courses and not just in, um, in literature courses. It also began to be taught in feminist literature courses, in indigenous uh, courses, and not just um, on indigenous um, literature, but on indigenous politics as well. So I was very, very fortunate in the sense that um, those it transcended boundaries um, that were totally unexpected. And because I felt that they were unexpected and I wasn't expecting it, I think that that sense of not being um, aimed for, that sense of, of not having the ambition um, for it to become you know, a world famous contribution, I think um, that it made its own truth and it's made its own pathway. And um, its particular relevance um, is in um, uh, gender politics. It's about a young girl, of course, as you know, um, who uh, transcends her boundaries, those expected assumptions of what young uh, girls or women um, um, are, um, um, have um, and the limitations uh, uh, that were assumed they should have um, in, in, in those days and even today. Um, it transcended its, its politics and that is that um, it became part of the indigenous canon um, of, of world literature uh, rather than just a, a, a Māori um, product for a New Zealand audience. And um, I think it, it, it gave uh, um, that sense of, of being um, a piece of, uh, of literature that could stand there. Um, I used to think, oh, you know, it's, it's really like National Velvet. Uh, in National Velvet, um, the girl rides a horse. Well, in this one, the girl rides a whale. And it's kind of like, um, it's the indigenous version of Heidi. Uh, because uh, there are very, very few Indigenous uh, heroines um, um, who you can point to in um, world literature and in, um, in film literature. And so all of these things have then um, made it one of those points of reference that people now look to in terms of the evolution of, um, of, uh, of film in New Zealand of Indigenous film, of Māori film, um, of Indigenous literature, of New Zealand literature, of, of, of Māori literature. And I'm not saying any of these things to make me look good or to make me, make me sound good, uh, but these are things that were unexpected. So I think its lasting relevance is its purity. It has a sense of purity about it. It has a sense of innocence about it. And it has a sense that people can walk into the book or walk into the film also and feel these are my people. Well, it all goes back to that war um, when I was 11 and writing on that, that bedroom wall of mine. And it's kind of like my cave of dreams from us. All of the dreams that I ever had were there, including uh, stories um, and myths that I had uh, heard down at uh, Waituhi uh, Marae uh, and uh, on the Rongopai and Takitimu in particular, and uh, Pākohai. And those stories coming from a Māori source have made me the writer uh, that I am. Uh, because most of my, my work, um, their taproot or their um, hūtaki goes into the dirt on those, from those three marae. 
and so the work has grown from from there um, it's grown out of the source of of Pudako. all of my work has got an abiding sense of an a an inciting uh, myth uh, to it so with uh, with well rider for instance the inciting myth was um the myth of paikia um, of Kai Kahutia Tarangi, who comes on a whale um, to Aotearoa. Um, and so therefore it's been a crucially a, a crucial part of the, of the makeup of all of my books have been that rather than taking their source of inspiration from Western European um, traditions, um, they go back to their source, they find their source in uh, Māori, uh, Māori Pūrāko. The next book is called um, Navigating the Stars and it really is true. Um, there's a French author, uh, Marcel Proust, and um, he wrote in search of lost time um, with the captive that when we have passed a certain age, and I've certainly passed a certain age, uh, the soul of the child we were, and the souls of the dead from whom we have sprung, come to lavish on us their riches and their spells. Well, I have been truly lavished with really, truly rich spells by those souls of my tupuna. And their souls, especially uh, my uh, grandmother, one of my grandmothers, Nanny Minnie, and my father, they were magnificent storytellers in my life. And so with this particular book, what happened was that after I'd finished doing um, Native Son, and I had said to Harriet Allen, who's my publisher, I said to her, well, you know, I really want to take a break before I, um, I do the third um, volume of the memoir. And she said to me, well, what are you going to do between now and when you start it up? And I said, I'm taking a break. And she said, but what are you going to do? <laughs> Thanks, Harriet. Uh, so I went to bed that night and I realised that actually this was the moment that I should really think about doing this book, which I had tried to do over many, many years. This book on Māori myth, this book on uh, Māori um, creation legends, uh, which... Um, uh, we have had many, many versions before, and I thought, well, it's about time that perhaps with the skills that I currently have now, that I look at them, analyse them, consider them, and actually show that they are richer and stronger and much more beautiful and hold many, many messages of, of hope for the environment, many messages of hope for all of us who are in our bubbles, many messages of optimism in terms of the possibilities um, that we still have to harness all of the energy of the wa, what Māori calls the wa, which is the, 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 the creative impulse that has come, out, come to us from to kore the void and to, to pour the night into te ao, uh, the day, to all of us over all of these years and so I thought that I would write this book um, recreating and analyzing and assessing the richness and the huge resource repository that we have um, to take ourselves um, beyond 2020 and into a magnificent future.